Why, hello there, my name is Pale Horse, got another build today. We're doing Shield 45. No big deal, nothing special. But instead of a foamy, we're doing an ulti clip. If you are not familiar with the ulti clip, you're about to be. When you buy this thing, looks like this. Package, nice, cool. Comes with hardware, nice, cool. And bam, all right, ulti clip. So this guy, Spring Steel. It is a, uh, I believe it's a two-piece design. Yep, two-piece. And if you look at it, there's a little guy right in here that when you close it, it pinches that, and that's what locks it into whatever you're using or whatever you're wearing. Uh, we're going to mount this on here. So doing it this way or doing it on foam, it's the same thing, but this is going to be mounted right so, so we're going to have to block right here. Easy peasy. Yes. Does it need to be done? Yes. And then, I think I might have figured out my Glock 19 TLR1 mold from Pale Horse that you saw in the last video was not working for me. Uh, I drilled more holes. Didn't work. I epoxied those holes. Actually, I'll kind of show you what I did here. Drilled. And then epoxied. Bam. Right? And then what I did is I drilled another hole. Didn't work. And I epoxied it. And then what I did is I took a shell... I formed it to get what you know what's going on and I put that against this and then I took that and shoved it in my press so I have an exact outline of where it needs to go and then I took that and I marked out in black where I need to cut so I'm gonna dremel that down a little bit and then we'll do a pull after we do this and uh, see how it goes I already got the uh, piece of black cut and as you can see, crap that I've been moving out of the way and I'm going to be tossing out the window, except for the um, poker table. I want that. Anyways, let's um, let's build this. So my ovens are, my press is already on. We're going to go ahead and get this all set, get it out the door, and bye. As you can see, that's all I got to do for blocking. That's it. Coyote Brown, here we come. Oh, hey, guess what? Now I got to drill it. Drilled. Now to cut. Cut. Now to trim. Trimmed. Now to fold. And what do you know? It's ready for hardware. Now, on this, what I didn't mention before is we're going to be doing a claw. It has been a while since I've actually shown you how I mount a claw. And for all the new subscribers, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through it. Because a lot of companies put in this hardware and the claw wiggles and then it's just junk. So we're going to do it a little differently where it will not wiggle. I'm going to show you that. Very, very easy. I've been doing this from the beginning, and technically there's two options, but this is how we're doing it. So we're going to go ahead and mount. I usually mount the shortest one just because I like the shortest one. Um, you can do whatever you want, and this is going to go with this. All right. So before I actually mount this and explain that, we'll go ahead and mount this because it is so much easier to do this when it's not bolted together. All right, get the hardware ready. And I have some Loco Taito. And the way they have this stuff set up is it's pretty good. So the screw actually bottom out against the uh, Chicago, the threaded post. And you're good. All right, so we'll set this to where we want it. And then go ahead and tighten it down. All right, get off some of the juices. All right, here we go. These screws. This is three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch there. This is a eighth inch pass through. All right, these are quarter inch right here, and these are three sixteenths, all you need. So you're gonna go ahead and take your pass-throughs, and your pass-throughs are, uh, they got the ribs on them, so it, it locks into whatever you're screwing against. So throw those on there, and then you're gonna take your three quarter inch screw, and don't tighten it just yet. That part's coming. Right, 
and square. I square this up with the trigger guard and then go ahead and lock it in place. If you notice, you got a little bit of extra room. Now you're gonna take your quarter inch rubber spacers, lay those down, and then you're going to take your 3 16 and feed those from the bottom. If you do anything longer, the shaft here will bottom out against the screw or the kydex and you will not be able to tighten it any further, which is the reason why I do 3 16 Let's see how this, all right, that feels good. And there she has it for the Shield 45, bam. Now what I'm eager to do is I want to test out the Glock. I'm going to just do just a little bit of a, there we go. And then that's going to go with this guy and this holster is now complete. Start to finish, this was only, I don't know, eight minutes and that's, all the hardware. So this is all set. We're going to go ahead and uh, throw it in the bin to go to this gentleman with his info. And I really want to get this going. So, um, like I said, I ran a whole bunch of them last night. We have that piece right there. I ran a whole bunch after it wasn't working. I ran some, uh, some orange, as you can see. And I tried that, and it just it was going against our 19 with TLR1, and it's just it's not getting it. And what I have come to realize is that the way this was off the cut is it was ending up like right here, and it wasn't ending up here. So where this is is where I'm seeing the cut should be according to this press right here. So I'm going to dremel that out real quick, and I will probably do a small piece of kydex, piece of scrap, to do a test fit right across it, and then I'll go from there. So I'm gonna dremel that, and I'll show you before I press. And there it is dremeled in the section that I wanted. I'm gonna go ahead and throw one small uh, hole right in the center, that way the kydex will get sucked down into it. And you can see the other epoxy that I laid in there. If this doesn't work, I'll go ahead and epoxy it and try it again. Uh, worst case scenario, when I do a foam press, I put it right here. So worst case, I will go ahead and drill it right there, but we'll see. But I'm hoping this will do it, if my math is correct, but I have been wrong before. What I did here is this is the pole that I just took off of that. And you can see the indent is actually pretty much how I wanted it. And I took some, I'm going to take my pencil, rub my pencil on it. And then I'm just going to, like the holstering, it's got a good bump right there which is good, and I want to make sure it's not rubbing on the frame, and it is not. You can see a little bit of rub off right here, which is where we want it, so I'm thinking that's good. I have a piece of 12 by 12 black in the press right now, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and make the full holster and see how well this goes and go from there, because if I could do that, then I won't need a replacement from Pale Horse, although, I mean, $200 for a mold, I'd like it to work out of the back, but... I very rarely have an issue with pale horse molds. Um, but like I said, it's not as pretty as a uh, machine cut. It's done by hand, but it is what it is. Nothing I can do about it because I don't have anything to cut it with, but I think we're going to be okay. So, yeah. I only wasted scrap, so don't worry about that. I don't have to, or actually I wasted one big piece of Kydex. All these were cutoffs and, uh, this, this is how we do it. Just trial and error. And when you're first starting doing this stuff, you will burn through Kydex. So use black. It's cheap. And there's a lot of it. That pole looked pretty good. The retention spot is actually on point. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to cut it, trim it, and see how well this works. And then this one will be available. It's actually not for an order because I already finished that one. Um, but I need to get this mold dialed in. So now I can offer it as shells. But let's go. The moment we've all been waiting for. And then tomorrow, I'm going to Maine. And 
we're getting a big old snowstorm. What the heck is uh? Is. All right, losing my mind here. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Ah. Oh, actually, it's got has some. I might have to go deeper, or just tighten it and see what this does. Yep, so as we can see, there's a little bit of resistance right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend that cut down slightly. And I think that will be the sweet spot. Because this is this is tightened rather tight. So uh yeah, and it's not not a lot of wiggle. So actually that right there, this part right here is the amount of room, if we put this here, let's do this, the amount of room from this point right here to this point is that wiggle right there. So if I take, where's the mold? If I take this point, what I'll do is I'll continue up roughly the length of what that was, continue over, and then I'll cut that out and go from there. Because I could always, I mean, technically I could always add material, um, but what I'll do is I'll cut that and then press another, but as far as stuff, I mean, technically this one isn't that bad. So I'll do that. I'll do it right now and we'll press another. Okay, round seven, it's in the press. Um, again, this is a piece of scrap. I'm gonna do pretty much this section right here, just straight across like another like four inches and uh, I'll put the retention in it and go from there. And then you gotta clean up the driveway because we got snow coming. A Couple days ago, it was one to two feet. As of last night, it was uh, eight to 12 and they're hovering around six to eight right now. So I'm hoping it's not that bad. Uh, like I said, I got to travel and um, I'll have the kids in the car and all my equipment. So it's going to be one expensive trip if it, you know, if we get in an accident. So hopefully that won't happen. But anyways, uh, I got 50 seconds left on this and this better work. I think it will. I don't think we're going to have an issue. I think it's going to be dialed in after this. I went a little bit deeper and I went a, bit, a little bit longer. Here's how it looks. Bada bing. And hopefully that does it. So I'm going to go ahead, press that down, have some fun, and, uh, well, you're going to see the result anyway, because here it is. Here we go again. And this is literally a quick, don't care. Got to get this on here. all the way <laughs> this one I deformed a little bit but oh yeah I think we hit it that feels real good and it's this right here bam yeah, so that looks good. I might clean it up a little bit so it's uh, it's more of a straight down. I'll probably grab a needle bit. So, yay! Woohoo! Feel like that's it then. And uh, what I'll do, like I said, I'll probably go just a little bit deeper and clean it up a little bit so it looks good. And there we have it. I finally have that fixed. Now, the only thing I have to do is fix the this this is way too low right here so if i put 
this in here, see how low that is, and that gives this a lot of flex. Um, I want it at least up here, so I'm gonna add another about three quarters of an inch to the mold, and uh, I'll show you how I do that as well. But for now, this is it, and, well, that's not it, That's this is gonna be trash. Unless somebody wants this for like a, under your pillow or something like that, I'll totally send it to you. This is trash, obviously, and but it works. So I am all set with this. Finally, that was a little nerve wracking. Spending $200 on a mold and it doesn't work is very frustrating, but, and then drilling it and then realizing you drilled it in the wrong spot and then cutting it and then you gotta fill it with epoxy and then drill it and then you drilled it in the wrong spot again. And then, yeah, it's a whole process. So, you know, it took a couple hours all in all to do it, but it's done, it's working. And now I could go ahead and offer that. I'm going to revamp my mold section or not my mold. Well, actually I got to update it, but my section on my website for holster builders, where you can order molds from, I'm going to break it down instead of, uh, you know, it says IWB or taco style and it lists all of them. I actually maxed it out. So I'm going to have to break it down with, uh, SIG Glock FN Springfield, you know, all that. So I'm going to break it down into what I can do for each one of those. That way everything's listed and I'll be able to take care of you guys. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, but, uh, it was a quick video with the, um, Smith and Wesson 45 MMP shield. And I'm just glad that pale horse is going. So rock on, build something good, have safe, have fun, have safe, have fun. Yeah. Be safe, have fun. I'll see you later. Bye.